Before we begin with this video, I'm doing a live stream with Darren from Vitra to talk about this shower. We'll be answering your questions on this video live on this channel on the 14th of April 2022. So if you've got any comments, comment them below and also click the link to the live video and set yourself a notification up so you don't miss it in April. Hi, my name's James. Welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm going to be installing a Vitra Aqua Heat Concealed Shower Valve and Thermostatic Mixer on this breeze block wall behind us here. So you're gonna learn about how to conceal your showers in a breeze block wall, how to fix them properly, how to pipe them up safely, and all the planning and processes that I go through when I'm doing this out on site. I hope you enjoy the video guys, let's get going. I've added this very shower to our Amazon store, links to that below, but click those links at the end of the video once you've left a like and a comment. Right then guys, so the first thing I always do when I'm going to install any kind of shower equipment, any equipment in a bathroom or shower or anywhere, is get all the equipment out, get every piece that I'm going to be installing out, have a good look over it and make sure I know exactly what I need and exactly what I need to think about when I come to the next stage, which will be the planning stage. So we do a quick unboxing. Now I know YouTube loves an unboxing, but it's really important you do this as well if you're thinking about installing this sort of equipment. So once we've got the aqua heat out, a few things I just want you to notice straight off the bat the fact that we've got spirit level built in that's nice to have on there the fact that also we've got our cover plate on here and that can be easily undone with a four millimeter allen key that's supplied in the kit there are two types of plate configuration for this we've got the rounded plate that we're going to be installing today but we've also got the square plate as well and these can come in a few different outlet configurations We've got the one outlet, the dual outlet, which could either be to a pan head over the top or a standard handset as well. And we've also got the three outlet, which means we can go over to a bath fill. Now the plate that we've got on here today is for a three outlet because I want you to see that, but we're not gonna be installing physically the three outlets on this video. But I do have the bath fill kit here so we can have a good look at that as well once we've got all this installed. So a couple of things as a plumber, straight away I'm gonna be thinking about. Number one is that we've got three quarter inlets for the hot and the cold and they're denoted by the blue and red rubbers on here. For the three outlets, I've got one on here, one on here and one on here that I've already blanked off. They are in half inch. You'll have to buy the fittings that you want for this valve separately because every installation is different. You could be going up, down, sideways or whatever in the pipe work when you're doing this job. For today's video, I will be installing an over the top pan head right out the top there and also a handset on a shower rail. So let's move on to the next stage of this job, planning. And this is a really important stage, guys. All right, so planning. The first thing I want to know is what is the width of the shower tray or the bar that we're installing against. We're gonna be putting a 760 shower tray in here, very small one. So the first thing I would do is measure 760 out from the wall and also 380 which is our center point for the whole install. Because I'm gonna have my shower head at the center, I'm then gonna have my controller about here. Depending on which side I wanna put it, I'll either put the, the rail on this side or the rail on this side. Usually, if this was gonna be the entrance, I'd put the rail on this side here. What I want to then do is measure halfway between the center to the edge. So then when we've got these, we've got a nice halfway bit as well. So the center line is where we're going to put Vitra's aqua heat shower valve the pan head will be on this line as well and then we use the edge of the shower or bath line and the edge of the actual cubicle itself and divide that distance so we know where the center of our components are going to be and you'll see why we do that if you stick around and watch the rest of this video when you're measuring the depth of your chase be sure to remember that you're going to have maybe a tile thickness adhesive and any finish on top of the brick wall afterwards to consider as well we've got a nice beautiful pan head here as well now i just want to pop that just on the center here just to make sure that when that's up high over here it's not going to be in the way of our rail and look at that Looks like that would be just fine. How about that, would be brilliant. So on this particular valve here, and if I would always recommend, this is a plumber's tip, if you're not sure about which outlet does what, just quickly pop a connector on the cold, set the thermostat to sort of center so it's letting cold through, and then just twist the knob around on the top and see what water comes out of which outlet when the knob is pointing in a certain direction, and then you'll know exactly which way you're going. So if you look on here, you'll see it says shower head handset on this outlet here, 
and the pan head on this outlet here. The outlet at the top that I've blanked off would be where our bath fill would be going. So hopefully that's something for you to think about there. Then I can run my pipe work round up to the head okay. If I have my uh, flexible hose coming out of this bit here and then going round to where our upstand will be, then that will be fine. You know what? I think we now know that we can get our hot and cold up through a chase up here and that this valve is going to sit nicely in that wall once we've got it all cut in. We've almost now finished the planning stage. All I need to do to know exactly where I'm going to put my chases in this wall is actually get the valve connections in and also know roughly where all my pipe work is going to go. So I'm going to feed this valve in 15 millimeter copper pipe work. We could feed it in 22 millimeter if we like, but for demonstration purposes, 15 millimeters will do just fine. So the first thing I'm going to do is I've got my three quarter here to 15 millimeter compression. Very simple, I use Loctite 55 thread. Uh, you'll be able to find this in our Amazon store as well. And we just crisscross that over a few times, just like so. And then we wind that in to the valve body itself. And then we tighten that up. And we'll do the same on the hot side just here. One thing I really love about this is the fact that everything is protected when it comes to the top gubbins, because we'll be coming to that later, the very last bit of the job. And having that bit on there to protect all the valve workings and everything, it gives you a real good peace of mind as you're doing the job, so that's nice. Very nice, thank you. Right, so for the outlet that goes to our handset, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put a soldered fitting in here. It's just going to be a straight bit of 15 mil pipe. I'm just going to solder that on there and then we're going to screw it into the side of here because all that's going to do is come out sideways and just come straight out the wall to our connection plate. For the pan head, I'm just going to 90 degree out on our soldered fitting out of the right hand side of the aqua heat valve. I'm just going to run that up by about six inches and then terminate it there for now because then we're going to go over to the very fun bit, chasing the wall out. Hell yeah! By the way, all the tools I use, consumables, everything in this tool bag and every other tool bag that I've ever used in this channel, you'll be able to find in our Amazon store as well. So for this side piece, it's really easy for us to figure this out. I can just pop this on like so. And I want the center of my outlet to be on the center of this mark here, 14 centimeters. Want this in there a little ways. So I just lay this pipe down, look at it from above. Very easy for me to set that on the center there. There's our 14.2 centimetres just there, which means then I can accurately cut this. For the outlet going up to the pan head, and also because I just want to show you there's so many different ways that we can do this. Uh, so we've got our solder fitting that's just getting cooled off here that we're going to put on in a minute but also we've got this here which is a standard half inch to 15 millimeter compression elbow so we're just going to pop that on this side here and I've just loctited that up as well and we're just going to get that pointing up like that Great stuff now I can pop this in here and we can just twist this so it's facing the right way but look how easy this is guys I mean we're making this job super breezy Wicked. To prepare our hot and cold outlets, we're not going to fully get these done yet, but what I am going to do, so I know exactly how much to chase out when we do our chase, so I'm just going to pop a little bit of pipe in there, pop it into the fitting, and we're going to cut off that exact length. We're going to do that twice, one for the hot and one for the cold. And then if I pop an elbow on those, we know exactly how much we need to account for taking off later on in the job. Now we can mark out the wall and do our chase. This is the fun bit but it's also a very dusty bit. Ow. So we're getting to a beautiful stage now. Look at that. Guys, this is just gorgeous, isn't it? Um, so now we know, we know that what I'm gonna do in a minute is our pipe is gonna go around here and up this chase here. We know we've got to do a little bit of a chase here. So let's draw that, let's draw that chase in now, shall we? Let's get, that, that's, let's get it put in. We know that we've got a chase here to do. And the same here. 
So when we mark out our chases, as you can see, we're not just marking out the valve body of the aqua heat itself, we're also marking out where our pipes are gonna have to fit in around it too. It's really important. Sometimes I'll even hang the valve on the external surface of the wall just to make it a little bit easier. Make sure your lines are really easy to see so you can see them when you're doing your disc cutting. Also, because we've done all this work, we can now draw down where our hot feed is gonna go and also where our cold feed is gonna go down here so we can get that chase done. So I'll do those bottom chases first before we move on to marking out exactly where our pan head is gonna come out of. Before we get too far though, I'm just gonna cut out the hot and cold copper feed pipes from our first fix out of the wall so they don't get in the way of my disc cutter or my special contraption while we're cutting. As you can see here, those Ox 15 mil cutters are still going strong, absolutely brilliant. Like I said, you can get these in the Amazon store as well. But what you won't be able to get is my amazing disc cutting dust extraction box slash big goggles. I'm so proud of this little mini invention. I did put it up on our YouTube shorts as well. So if you wanna check out the build for this, you can find this in the shorts section on the YouTube channel. Well, it's not too dusty at all, is it? That is the way I'm always gonna do it from now on. So for those of you who always seem to want to know this in the comments section, the bricks that I'm going through today are Thermalite, which are just like purest butter to go through absolute pleasure. Right, so we've got this bit cut out now. I'm not gonna hoover this out just yet because we're just gonna take our score up here. You sometimes get this where a little bit more brick comes out than you wanted to. Uh, we're gonna be filling this in soon with expanding fixer foam, so that all should make sure that we're okay. But now I can pop this in here. All my pipes are sticking out how I'd like them to. And also when I look down the side, I know that when I've got my finished tile or my finished surface here, we're gonna be exactly right for the depth of our wall and how far we've got our valve in. So now I'm just gonna do my chase for this up here. I'm gonna have my pan head just here on this. That'll be just about right. So I'm just gonna go either side of that just so we can get a clip in there. This is exactly what happens to me when I'm on site, okay? But usually there's a chippy getting in the way. I wish every chase could be dug out and cut as easily as this, but those Thermalite bricks just make it so easy, so you should end up with a beautiful chase out looking something similar to this. So now that we've got that done, let's install the valve in the recess. So we've got our lovely recess depth, just like here, like you can see. This pipe is gonna go around here, that's gonna go down there, and that's gonna go down there. Lovely, brilliant. So the first thing I'm going to do is we're just gonna get a couple of stubs of pipe just there and just sticking out of there because we won't be able to get in here to undo and do up those compression fittings in there. So that's the first thing I'm gonna do, okay? So you understand what I mean. If I had this in the wall, I'd really struggle to get this tightened up so it's best to get these tightened up now and then I know our solders might be a little bit more difficult because they're near to a heat sink but you watch me do that in a few minutes time I guarantee we'll get these done just a-okay oh yeah another great thing about using thermalite bricks is the fact they take screws so well and you barely have to plug them that being said Vitro do supply plugs and screws for brick walls should you need to go into them but the main thing I want for you to take from this is you're going to have to adjust each corner and use a spirit level to make sure that our valve is flat on the wall and then after that we'll use our expanding foam to really fix it in position. And now for the bit that I know you've all been waiting for, a lovely bit of pipe work. I tend to do all my recessed pipe work in copper. I don't tend to put plastic into recessed walls. I don't know why, it's just the way I like to do it. So yeah, we're just getting everything piped up here. I'd say one thing I think you should think about if you're doing soldering near the aqua heat shower valve is just to make sure you protect it A, from the heat, but also from any corrosive flux that you're using to clean the pipe. Anyway, just sit back and relax, guys. This is an enjoyable moment.
So now that we've got all our pipe work in, we should be at a moment throughout this install, the creme de month moment, as I call it, turning the water on and making sure that we've got no leaks before foaming up. Right, everyone, the water is back on. Uh, I'll just prove it just by, you just see if you can hear, I'll put my mic near it. Yeah, okay, and hope I don't get wet doing this. Okay, uh, everything's on on here and here. These are gonna be absolutely fine. If you're really not sure about this, the best thing you can do is get a blank, pop a blank in there and just turn each one of these on and leave them overnight. I'm so happy with how this has gone. I'm just gonna pop the lid back on this beast and we're gonna get this foamed up and then I'll pop back tomorrow once all the foam's dried off. This is like the fun bit of the job. So then everyone, it's the next day. All of this is rock hard now. Now, hopefully you can get an understanding there as to why I prefer to use expanding foam. The main reason is, is that it goes all the way around the joints right at the back. But also the old school way of doing this would be to actually cement over the copper pipes and actually protect those copper pipes with like newspaper or the old type insulation you used to get, like the hemp sort of insulation. Uh, you don't need to do that with this. This stuff does not attack anything on the copper or the brass and it just gets everywhere. So now this is probably the most satisfying part of the whole job I love the most is cutting away all of this. It's, it's very nice. It's very nice indeed. Still a bit wet in the middle. So now, whatever substrate we're on, now that we've cut all that off, we're just gonna push these back slightly. If this was concrete or if this was some sort of filler on here, it wouldn't matter. We do this every time like this. The rubber gasket that I'm putting on here is for an extra layer of protection to stop any water getting through once we've finished off the installation. And it's a really good idea that Vitra supply as well free of charge. So then everyone, we are pretty much at the stage where all our planning and everything has come together. Um, at this point, it's up to you what you would do with this wall. Would you put a backing board on here to make it waterproof? Would you tank it? I'd recommend you do that. I'd recommend you tank that shower before you install the next piece, which is going to be effectively your tiles or the decorative finish, the panel that you might have in the shower. We're going to put a panel on this. Measuring out and cutting these is something that, although I could teach you how to do it, it's something you really have to learn to do yourself. Measure out, measure up, measure three or four times. But we're at that great stage in the job now where we can get the panel up and second fix our valve body, which is gonna be really easy, our overhead shower as well, and our handset and rail. So then guys, everything's in now. I mean, I know this is a demonstration panel, but this is gonna give you really good ideas to how to do this. We come to another creme de month moment. This is the second fix. So we're gonna second fix our shower outlet there. We're gonna second fix the shower valve here, and we're also gonna second fix the pan head as well. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna score around this and cut off the protective shroud around the aqua heat valve. <laughs> Scoring around and cutting away the shrouds really easy. Once we've done that, we can screw on our first chrome shrouds and also silicon up around the back of our plate to make sure no water gets through. We silicon around the thread for our shower outlet and if you need to use a set of grips to tighten that up, make sure you use a little bit of cardboard to protect the chromium plating.
It's the same process for our pan head arm as well. We use Loctite to do the thread and also seal around the hole. Screwing on and tightening up the head itself is really easy using the supplied rubber washer inside. Right guys, we're getting to that brilliant stage now. Um, now remember what I said, we've got a centre here. We measure this distance here and that's our centre there. And from that, I will, well, I could put that in the middle. I don't know. No, I don't want to because if I do that, then my hose will get in the way of my lovely valve. So I am going to pop it on the side here. As ever, this is up to you, this sort of thing, isn't it? You know, this is your house. <laughs> so do what you want in it. I say, where's my spirit level gone? Well, look, before I find the spirit level, this is a really simple setup. If you look through here, you'll see we've got a hole all the way through. Effectively, we pop a screw straight all the way through. We do that at the bottom as well. And the main thing you want to do when you're doing this side of things is decide what height you want, and then use a spirit level to make sure that these two are in line so we've got everything nice and level when we fit it in. So there we go, all done. Look how cool this shower is. It's absolutely brilliant. I'm really, really impressed with how easy it was to get the box in. Um, the little things that companies don't have to do, but Vitra have done here with a little level and all that sort of stuff. The cover plate as well, to make sure that everything's covered up and nice and safe while you're doing all the insulation process. Let's just turn it on and have a look. So look, let's bang on the pan head. Oh yeah. Look at that. How good is that? And let's pop on the handset. One thing I really love as well about the handset is that you've got the standard sort of three setting for it. One little tip I'd give you is when you're putting the new hose on, often it'll be kinked up because it's been in a box for ages. Sometimes it's a good idea to just attach it to something with the hat shower head at the bottom and just hang it up so it gets rid of that kink. So there you go, everyone. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video showing you how to recess a shower into a brick wall and all the other little things, the thought processes that I go through when I'm doing this sort of work. There's timestamps at the bottom of this video so you can go back and learn about certain aspects of this job if you're gonna go back and do it in your own home. I'll leave links to Vitra's website below if you wanna buy this shower itself. And please click the subscribe button, the like and comment below. Thanks ever so much for watching, guys. And I'll see you soon. Hold tight. WhatsApp's probably going to be the place as well that I'll share all the behind the scenes stuff. So what I'll probably do over the next few days, some of you this will probably matter to, some, probably most of you this won't matter because most of you are behind the scenes members already. Um, but we'll keep the behind